land or the lithosphere is basically the topmost layer of the earth that contains soil. In this video we'll be focusing on soil and here's what we would be discussing in this video. Point one, the layers and of soil and their contents and point two would be the process of soil formation. Let's dive into the video. So uh, the contents of soil are basically like this. 50% of soil is solid and the solids are split up into two parts, minerals and organic matter. 45% is minerals and 5% is organic matter. The remaining 50% is liquids and gases. That's just air and water. Let's move ahead. What do the layers of soil mean? If you dug up the earth, you'd most probably find something like this. You'd find uh, different layers of soil under the earth. And, and here's another picture. You'd find different layers. The demarcations may not be very clear, but you would still find a color difference and a difference of materials as you dig through the earth. Let's discuss what these layers are. Let's go to the first layer. The first layer is called humus. This is about two inches thick and it's uh, dark in color and it's uh, made up of organic matter. Now what do we mean by organic matter? Organic matter basically means dead, dying, decaying plant and animal matter. This layer imparts nutrients and fertility to the soil. The next layer is called topsoil. This layer is 5 to 10 inches thick. It contains a mix of organic material and minerals. Organic material moves downward from the humus because of that it's a nutrient rich layer and it's a fertile layer this is the layer that's very important for plant growth the next layer is called the layer of immature soil it's also called subsoil it's one to six feet deep this layer has not yet completely turned into soil yet it has low organic content because it's far away from the humus layer it contains some small rocks the roots of trees don't extend beyond this layer usually. You can see that in the picture as well. The next layer is the layer which contains soil and small rocks. It's also called the substratum. This layer is three to six feet deep. It contains a larger number of rocks and the size of the rocks is also larger. It has very low organic content and high mineral content on the other hand. Plants can't grow much in this layer. This is the last layer of soil. It's called the bedrock layer. This is very hard in nature. It's purely made up of rock, which is minerals purely and near zero organic content. The next thing we will discuss is the formation of soil. Soil is formed from rocks by a process called the weathering of rocks. This is basically the breaking up of rocks into smaller pieces, eventually forming fine soil particles. Soil formation is a very slow process. Can you guess how much of soil is formed in a thousand years? A thousand years just forms 2.5 centimeters of soil. Yes, it's really slow. So the weathering of rocks is divided into two types. A, you have mechanical weathering and B, you've got chemical weathering. Look at this picture. What do you see here? I can see a tree whose roots have wrapped themselves around a rock. What does that do? Roots of plants can often penetrate into rocks and cause cracks to form. These cracks can widen and then break the rock into smaller pieces. Let's look at another example of weathering of rocks. Let's say I have a rock with a small crack. Let's say water gets stuck into the crack, right? What would happen when the water freezes? It would expand, right? And that would cause the crack to widen. And over years, when this process repeats itself, you would notice that the crack would get wider, something like that, and essentially break the rock into smaller pieces. Let's look at chemical weathering. Chemicals can cause the breakdown of rocks by slowly eroding them for years. Let me give you an example. Rain often is acidic, and rain can slowly erode away at rocks and make them into powdery soil. We just understood the process of weathering where rocks break down into soil. Now let's look at the layers of soil in the light of weathering. Bedrock usually breaks down into smaller rocks because of weathering. Those rocks further break down into immature soil because of weathering. And that further becomes topsoil again because of the breaking down of rocks into soil. Now this causes minerals to move upward in this entire process. And 
it's very interesting that organic matter on the other hand moves in the opposite direction it moves downward let's see how humus is the source for organic matter the organic matter in humus starts penetrating down towards topsoil and then that further moves towards the immature soil so this picture gives us an idea of how minerals move upwards whereas organic matter moves downwards